Let us compare two types of arteries, elastic versus muscular arteries. I will start with elastic type arteries. Example of this is the aorta or the pulmonary trunk or the major branches of the aorta. Here would be the lumen upwards and the first layer that is in contact with the blood is the endothelium, the lining of all the blood vessels. It has a shape of a simple squamous epithelium, but it's actually of mesenchymal origin. It's underlined by a basal lamina. And a thin layer of subendothelial connective tissue which is very thin at the beginning in young and healthy individuals but as we as we age it becomes thicker by depositions of uh, lipids that attract macrophages and that's where the um, process of atherosclerosis starts but normally we got here endothelium sitting on the basal lamina and subendothelial connective tissue. That's the layer called tunica intima. The next layer will be the tunica media. The conventional border here is the first layer of elastic membrane which is called the internal elastic lamina and then we have a whole um, series of repeating elastic membranes that have openings called fenestrations uh, even connected with with other elastin bridges and the pattern that is repeating here uh, is uh, two elastic membranes and the smooth muscle cells, vascular smooth muscle cells in between that are also surrounded by the type 3 collagen and the ground substance of the vascular extracellular matrix, mainly glycosaminoglycans. So you got the pattern of repeating elastic fenestrated membranes. These fenestrations are the openings here that facilitate the diffusion of metabolites across the vascular wall and also are penetrated by the cells such as the vascular smooth muscle cells. So then we got the vascular smooth muscle the type 3 collagen plus the glycosaminoglycans of the matrix and this together makes a sandwich like structure called lamellar unit with a thickness ranging between 30 to 40 micrometers and this repeats again and again many times in the human aorta of an adult individual this may repeat like 30 times okay again and again until we come to the last regular elastic membrane 
which is also called the uh, external elastic membrane and then we got the next layer but this one it was the tunica media the last layer is called the tunica adventitia or the tunica externa and it contains blood vessels, arterioles, venules, capillaries that are responsible for the nutrition of the vascular wall from the outer side. Uh, the wall is so thick that the diffusion from the inside would not be sufficient. The majority of the wall is, is, uh, uh, receives nutrition from the penetration of these blood vessels of blood vessels. So these are blood vessels of blood vessels in Latin Vesa Vesorum. And there are also autonomic nerves responsible for the nerve supply of that smooth muscle called Nervi Vesorum. Nervi Vesorum. The collagen in the tunica adventitia mostly consists of thicker type 1 collagen fibers. Now let's compare it with the muscular arteries. That's the majority of the all the medium or small sized arteries you know by name in the human body. So the muscular arteries they have got endothelium as well sitting on the basal lamina that same that the same we got the subendothelial connective tissue we got the internal elastic lamina but then the media the thickest layer and arteries is made mostly consists of vascular smooth muscle cells very densely packed in a very compact manner I will add the nuclei in the middle the vascular smooth muscle cells and there is type 3 collagen here in the matrix and some glycos amylicons but no repeating elastic membranes there might be the external elastic lamina on the border between media and adventitia and in the adventitia we got again the vesa vesorum and the nervi vesorum embedded in collagen fibers so we got the endothelium here basal lamina subendothelial connected tissue then the internal elastic the minor then the 
very closely and densely packed uh, smooth muscle cells, vascular smooth muscle cells, surrounded mainly by type 3 collagen and glycosaminoglycans of the matrix. Then sometimes there is, sometimes there is not the external elastic lamina and the vasa and nervi vasorum. So again we got the intima media and the adventitia layer. These elastic types arteries are very well equipped with these uh, elastic uh, fenestrating membranes and if you consider the blood pressure curve in time and in these elastic arteries that are close to heart there's a maximum pressure peak in the systole and a really drop in the diastole because in the diastole the heart is pumping nothing and the blood pressure in the large arteries close to the heart drops dramatically so you got these great um, difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure that's the so-called pressure difference the ability to resist this the type of loading with a large pressure difference is thanks to these repeating elastic membranes while in muscular, muscular arteries the curve looks a little bit different the difference between the systolic and diastolic blood pressure is significantly smaller and the muscular arteries mainly react by vasoconstriction or vasodilation thanks to these really thick uh, uh, muscular media of course these are two extremes and there are like transitions in between these two uh, phenotypes of arteries.